What's going down everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Holmes Hobbies Motor Control. It's your boy Josh aka Coleman. You're probably wondering what the heck's going on. We've got two episodes coming out this week. This is the second one. If you missed the first one, go back and check it out. Basically in that episode we installed the brand new BLS SHV 500 servo from Holmes Hobbies. Today what we're going to do is we're going to install a Torque Master spool in the Grape Ape. Yes. You know, on the last episode we kind of brought it to everybody's attention. I've got a blown rear locker here. At least that's what I suspect. We're gonna find out when I crack this open. So what I'm hoping to do is get that yanked out of there and uh, get this installed. And it's probably gonna be a quick episode. This really isn't too hard to do. Yeah, it's pretty much direct replacement for the factory locker. So let's go ahead and get started. All right, so first things first, let's make a little room here. Uh, we'll set the spool aside for now. Let's go ahead and crack this open. Get this rear diff exposed. All right, so now we have the locker exposed and you can see there's some water in there and that's because I actually just washed this truck. You can see it floating around in there. Oop, there it goes. And I hate having dirty trucks up on my bench. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna go ahead and loosen up these lockouts. As you can see from driving it hard, they're already starting to loosen up. So it's a good thing that we uh, are doing this now you see here we've got this one's already loose this one's completely missing so we'll have to uh, replace that we'll get some team K and K hardware to pop in there you really don't even need to take the wheels off you can leave the wheels and tires attached to the axles just pull the uh, two screws out that holds each lockout on Boom. one more underneath here all right now we got those out you can literally just slide these out like so. Boom, and now I should be able to just, oh, nope, I forgot. We've still gotta take these off. We got these uh, two bearing retainers right here. I'm not really sure what the actual name is for them, but I think they're called bearing retainers. Loosen those up. Then we should be able to pop it out. There we go. All right, so there, as you can see, now we've got an open casing. So you can see the uh, ring gear spinning in there. Or not the ring gear, but the pinion gear spinning in there, which is attached to the uh, drive shaft still. And clearly there's a lack of maintenance. Now something a lot of people don't know or may not realize unless you've been watching a lot of these videos because I have mentioned it in the past is that this is a factory stock rate as far as all the gearing goes it has a factory transmission with the factory stock gearing in it uh, but as you can see this is not a hardened steel ring and pinion gear this is just the standard ring and pinion gear and this has been in here for shoot going on five years now uh, something like four years five years now something like that and you see it's all rusted up obviously there's some issues we might have to replace a couple bearings things like that but uh and clearly the teeth are sharpened up in this so if i was smart right now i'd be putting in a hardened steel ring and pinion gear but i don't believe i have one i'm going to check my stuff and see if i do we'll swap this out for a hardened steel setup if not we're going to put this right back in and see how much more life we can get out of it all right you guys so we made a little progress here what i'm doing now is i'm actually cleaning i uh went through my little bin here i always keep a bin of old uh ring and pinion gears i do that with all my gears i have bins for training gears bins for different gears and uh what i did was I went through that and I was able to find some old hardened steel uh, re and pinion gears, right? I fa actually found two of them that were 4313, which is the underdrive set. Um, that, and I've already gone through and I've cleaned them all up. But after cleaning them, one of them just is not getting that clean. And this is actually one that used to be in the yellow Jeep. I ran this in the yellow Jeep for about four years before having to remove it, something like that. And uh, while it's still not in the worst condition, you can see the grooves... Um, and you can see the wear, it's almost like a lip has been worn all the way around the edge of the teeth there. So I won't be using those. I'm not really sure if that's focusing or not. And so anyways, um, I found a second one here, which is also a 4313. And this one, I don't remember what it was out of, but you can clearly see the marks from a uh, factory axial locker. But what I did was I went ahead and I used smooth clean and sprayed it all down let it soak for a little bit and then sprayed it again and just went ahead and wiped it off with my towel and it comes out super nice and clean all right you guys so what we've got going on now is here's the old 
ring gear and locker and bearing. Um, I'm going to go ahead and show you the new ones here. Here is a couple of new ones. These are 4313 underdrive gears from Axial. They're the hardened steel gears. And uh, both of them are used. However, this one was a little too used. I've cleaned them both up, and this one you can see is just it's a little too far gone. It's got a little too much grooving going on in the teeth there and just a little too much sharpening going on. This one's got some uh, good wear to it as well. However, it's still usable at this point. I can still use this. Not only is it cleaner, uh, but the teeth aren't as damaged on the top. They're not as sharpened off yet. So uh, I'll go ahead and use this. I also have the matching pinion gear here, which I'll go ahead and clean that up as well. Set those aside. And then also what I'm going to do, I'm gonna, since I'm going to have to install a different pinion gear now that I'm switching to an underdrive set, uh, I'm going to have to remove the pinion gear that's in there. So I'll go ahead and remove my MIP CVD from the other side and slide that gear out. And I should be able to slide the new one right back in. Alright, so now I've disconnected my MIP. I should be able to just slide this guy right out of there. I need something to grab it though. My fingers are a little too fat. Boom, and there we go. There's the factory pinion gear. So now you can see it's all empty in there, it's all hollowed out. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and squirt a little of this in there. I don't want it to set, but I'm gonna spray some of this to break up that grease that's right there. Cause we're gonna go ahead and put new grease in here while we're at it too. You don't wanna leave that setting on there cause this is a plastic housing. So definitely don't do that. It'll eat up that housing. But I don't mind squirting a little just to break this stuff up here. We're not going to get too carried away as this is definitely a truck that gets just beat on thoroughly. So I'm not going to put too much time and effort into it. As it's just not worth it. But there we go. Now you can see the housing is cleaned up inside. They're pretty good. Um, now what I'll go ahead and do because there is uh, bearings in there still. Is we're going to go ahead and use some moose slick which is basically the opposite of clean. This is going to go ahead and lube it back up and we're going to spray those bearings out really good. And what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll take this 4313 and we're going to slide that baby right back in place. Boom. And we'll take the MIP CVD, slip that right back over the top Slip that right back through there. All right, you guys, so I've got 14 k k hardware screws out. Got a little thread lock here, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and put a little drop of thread lock on each one of these screws, because these screws are gonna go through the ring gear into the locker, or into the spool, and uh, we're going to want them to lock into place without needing to put lock nuts or anything on the other side. Because if a, it, adding nuts to it just increases the uh, possibility of something coming loose inside there while you're going full throttle, which we do not want. So line up your holes there. They can only line up one way. If you go the wrong way, uh, only two holes will line up. So you're going to want to go the right way and make sure all four holes are lined up. And you're going to want to come in from the back side here. So you can countersink these screws. Uh, ooh, make sure you don't cross thread those. That was close. And there's number four. Now I'll just double check, make sure they're all nice and tight. All right, looking good. So now, there we have it. That is a uh, used Axial HD 4313 ring gear right the uh, underdrive ring gear attached to a home's hobby spool which is going to have way tighter tolerances is uh, made out of 4340 chromoly if I remember right and is just extremely strong very well balanced and uh, yeah should make for a nice upgrade all right so I was able to find some bearings here they're uh, not new though they're used bearings but they make zero noise at all however they're a little dirty so once again we're going to go ahead and moose slick these up I'm going to lay my towel down here, and I'll just set the bearings on the towel, and we're going to take the moose slick and just hit the bearings. So now that i got those bearings all cleaned out moose slick, I'm just rolling them around a little bit in some uh, utter butter here, just to add that extra layer. Since they are used bearings, they are old. I'm trying to pack a little grease inside of there, because they are not properly sealed anymore like they used to be. 
All right, so now we've got the bearings lubricated. We've got the spool inst installed on the uh, ring gear. Next is to put these bearings onto this spool in this ring gear. So now, click those on like so. We're good. Now next, I've got to reinstall this. And I'll be 100% honest with you, I don't remember which direction it was going. <laughs> which is, should just slip right back in place. Make sure you've got it facing the right direction too, because if you put it the wrong direction, your wheels are going to go opposite. So make sure you got it pushed in correctly. And a good way to just check real quick is to lift up the rear end and spin the front tires and make sure that it's going to spin the back tires the same direction. All right, so now that's installed, we can go ahead and line up these shafts, something like that there. Make sure the holes are lined up on your lockouts. And there she goes. We've got them both lined up. You can still, if you want, you can double check. Just spin the front wheels. Make sure the back wheels are going to spin the same. Just like that there. And you can install the bearing carriers again. And slip these lockout screws in place. It's hard to believe just these two screws hold those in place, but that's how it is. Now as you can see, we've got a nice clean install there. The only thing left to do is to put this cover back on, but before we do that, we're actually going to install some of this uh, utter butter to help keep this nice and lubricated. Uh, normally I put it in before I put this in, but I really wanted you guys to see this time. So what we're going to do is we're just going to goop a whole bunch right here, and we're going to rotate it in there. Alright, so now we got that all gooped up. Let's go ahead and get this cover back on here. Alright. I'm going to go ahead and make sure that's locked down good. Alright, you guys. And there we have it. Should be able to turn that. Yep. Nice and smooth. No noise. And, uh, yeah. That's really all there is to it. So now that I've got that done, I think uh, I'm going to call it a day. And then on the next episode, what we're going to do is we're going to take this beast out and we are going to kill some hills. Yeah. You know what's good. I'll love you guys. I'll see you on the next episode. Thank you very much for tuning in. Let everybody know Holmes Hobbies where it's at. All right, you guys. Thank you for tuning in. Piece of chicken grease. Yeah, yeah.